Alwarkadian gathered his men who had been hiding until then and marched towards the northern gate of the Tanjore fort. Readers will have guessed and realized the reason why he did not call his men when he fought with Kuryudi Raman. Isn't it amazing that he didn't want other people to hear the most important secret details that he wanted to know for sure? After going halfway, he saw a lone man running like a madman in front of him. The man who ran like that knocked on the Alwarkadian in the dark and then ran again. Trusting in Tirumala, he held him tightly without letting go. He looked at his face and said, Damn! Doctor son? Where are you running to splash your head like this? He asked. Oko! Heroic Vaishnava? I was afraid that it was a demon or a devil. Good, from how far are you coming with this shore? Are there two men on two horses in front of you? He said. Yes, they are gone. What do you think of them? What about me? Good question. You wouldn't ask such a question if you knew who they were. Yeah, don't you recognize at least one of them? Only one person seemed like someone I knew but... Who, who, who looked like? Looked like Vandiyadava. I decided it couldn't be. Damn sinner. That's what you've decided. He's the god of Chatsad Vandaya. What, are you wondering? Wasn't Vandaya the van in the dungeon? He was, but not now. Vandiyadeva and another madman escaped from prison. They tied me up and ran away. Damn. Good job. What were your hands doing when they were tying you up? Why did you go to the dungeon in the first place? I went on the Prime Minister's orders, there is no time to be saying all that now. You also serve the Prime Minister? Come with me. Let's catch them and bring them back. Why should they be caught and brought? Let them go if they run away? What has come of it to you and me? The Prime Minister has captured a good man. If everyone was like you, this Chola kingdom would have been formed. Don't you know that Vandiyathevan was accused of killing Prince Kari Kalar? Not only that, he stabbed another man with a spear near Amuthan's hut and ran away. God! What's this? Who's the one stabbed over there? I didn't see who it was. I ran after Vandiyadeva. Well, well, if you don't come with me, go. Don't block the way. Let me go. Let me go. Doctor's son. I've seen so many fools in this world. You've beaten them all. They go on horseback. They run away daring death. You alone, go on foot and catch them? What do I care? Go. Go. What you say is true. That's why I called you to accompany me. You refused to come. I came and saw what was going on. I tried to stop them. Someone gave me a good beating with a stick in his hand and I brought them back. The pain is still not gone. I'm not used to fighting like that. You might. Yes, what's on your hand? It's like a blood stain, isn't it? They beat and hurt me in prison. Wicked giants. Then you follow those giants alone on foot? When they put you through this while you were imprisoned. So what are you asking me to do? I didn't ask you to do anything. Why are you blaming me? If I were in your position, I would go back and tell the right people, take at least five or six horsemen with me, and set out again on the manhunt. I would also go on horseback with a sword in my hand. The doctor's son thought for a while. Synthan had stabbed someone near Amuthan's hut and had come running. The thought that it might be Mad Huron Dakareya from the royal clan made him feel uneasy. But as this Vaishnava says, there is no point in walking alone. If it is Madhurandak Deva who fell near Nandavan's hut due to his spear, then it is better to put the blame on Vandiyadeva as well. He who kills one prince can also kill another prince? Is the punishment the same for both? Thinking of this, Pinyagapani said, Vandiyadeva is the one who killed the two princes. He started believing that. Vaishnava. Whatever you say is right. I am coming with you, and you must help me. Someone must tell the right person to send horsemen with me. I do not like the nature of great men. 
I do not know how to get along with them. Look, I said to the commander Kajum Balarvelar, I said to Anvil Anvil the Prime Minister, it was about recapturing the fugitives. I asked him to send some soldiers with me. Both of them started calling me a fool and a fool. I don't know what their intention was. What else is the purpose? They don't trust you. They don't want to confess this matter to you. You let the prisoners escape by being deceived inside the prison. They would have thought where you were going to catch them. I left to try and go alone with the intention of falsifying their memory. Anyway, should they stop at Kadakere? I know all the places where Vandiyadeva might be hiding. There are people there who can help me. Then go. Look at your skills. Though, it would be best if the horse went up and took a few more. Would you help with that? By this time both of them had reached the great gate of the North Fort. It was seen that a gang of elephants, horses and foot soldiers were coming at a little distance to the north of Rajapat. A mob also stood at the fort gate. Kajum Valarvelar, Thiruko Valar Malayam and Chief Minister Anuradar were clearly visible in the light of the lamps. You and I have a master standing at the gate of the castle, let's go to him, are you coming? The doctor's son hesitated. I have been asked once. To no avail. Perhaps you may believe your words as you have seen two men escape. But I doubt whether you will agree to send me along, he said. You are right. And they are waiting for something important at the gate of the fort. It is no use going to them at this time. They will not listen to anything you say. This side sees the Palyavatera is coming. With them comes Sambuvarayar. There, Parthapendra and Kanamaran are seen. Let's tell them and see. It is up to them to capture Vandiyadeva. There will be more trouble. All Workadians said. The procession soon approached them. In the past, the builders recounted the historical glory of Palyavatarais and the awards and heroic deeds of Amathiri Sambuvarayar of Kadambur, Mazapati Malavarayar, Parthapendra Palavan, Nilathankaryar, Domak Kyude Rajaliyar etc. Intermittent murmurs rang out. Associations organized. At the front of the procession, Chinapalyavatareya, Parthapendra and Kanthamaran came majestically sitting on white chariots. Next, in the Ambari of Madhthakaja, sat the great Palyavatareya and Sambuvareya. Behind them came other small land kings on elephants and horses. About a hundred soldiers marched forward and backward with swords in hand and swords between them. Seeing all Workadian and the physician's son Pinyagapani standing in the middle of the road in front of this procession, the little Palyavatare stopped his horse a little and said, Vaishnava. Is there any important message from the Prime Minister? He asked. Commander. The Prime Minister has not sent me any message. He will tell himself the message that needs to be told at the gate of the fort. But there is one important message, all Workadian stopped. What what what? The three asked eagerly. Vandiyadeva escaped from the underground prison. How can that be? What is he in Drahuda to magically disappear? Asked the small gardener. There's something contrived about it. Someone else must have coordinated with him. Said Parthapendra. It's all the work of that Kajumbalar big farmer. Said Kanamaran. Even if he runs away like that. Where will he run? Must be inside the castle. Said the small gardener. So says the velar. The Prime Minister sent me cautiously to come round the fort and look after him. The Prime Minister is anxious that no scandal should befall the Kadampur dynasty. It's a very satisfying thing to have at least one person who cares like that, said Kanamaran. Vaishnava. Tell me the truth. Are you coming around to prevent the fleeing? Or are you coming around to help? Asked Parthapendra. He was always suspicious of Vaishnava. Sir. If there were another occasion, I would answer them differently. Now is not the time for us to fight among ourselves. This doctor's son, Pinyagapani, tells a strange news. He says that two men have mounted on horses and that they are Vandiyadeva and Garatruman who have escaped from prison. Two men mounted the horse. 
I have also seen it pass quickly by this road. Panyagapani. Is what this Vaishnava says true? Said the small gardener. Swear, sir. Then why go and tell the prime minister or the minister? They are both very angry with me. What for? That I let them escape. How is that? Wasn't a madman in the underground prison saying that he knew where the crown of the Pandya clan and the golden harem were? Anuradha sent me to fetch him. Two men tied me up in the underground prison and ran away. Is the outgoing prime minister a fool like you who got caught up in this thing? Parthipendra Paul Avan smiled after saying that. The doctor's son angrily said, Sir. I'm not here to make you laugh. If you want to help, do it. He said. What are you asking for? Send four horsemen with me. Give me a horse. It is my responsibility to capture the fugitives. Have I not already accomplished the tasks assigned to me? Does the commander know? Said the doctor's son Panyagapani. What are you saying? Asked Parthipendran, the small gardener. It is necessary to send. The emperor has entrusted me with the responsibility of bringing you back. Otherwise I will go with him myself. The most important thing is to capture Vandiyadeva, said Parthipendra. At that time Kanamaran said, consign that responsibility to me. I will also go with him. Even if Vandiyadeva has gone to the gate of Yamaloka, I will bring him back. Chinapula Vetare also agreed to it. He also accepted the responsibility of pacifying Sambhavariyar etc. Immediately Kanamaran, the son of the physician and the four soldiers set off at full speed along the north bank of the Vadavad on their horses. Madhurand Hakan was not very used to horse riding. Even though he had become accustomed to thinking, he was very physically exhausted due to his long stay in the underground prison. Yet a new excitement was now born in the hearts of both men. By strength of spirit they endured weakness and journeyed. After travelling till midnight the two halted. There was a bridge across the river made of bamboo slats. Kathiruman expected people to come after them anyway. Therefore, he thought it would be better to cross the river and join Acre at that place. One can walk along the south bank of the river for a short distance and then return to the Kadakare route. There was another reason for crossing the river there. Satariraman doubted whether Madhurantha could cross the flood of the river by driving his horse. If the flood is high, it will be impossible. Leaving Madhurandhagan to go through the bridge, he himself could take the two horses one by one with the acre. All these ideas were agreeable to Madhurandha. The two sat down under a tree root to make up for some trouble before descending into the river flood. The flood of the river was rushing with the sound of so. The voices of the Mandu cause from all four sides pierced the ears. Among the clouds that were quickly dispersing in the sky, the stars were peering out and working together. Accustomed to sleeping mostly on sabra couches in palaces amid Panjani mattresses, Madhuranthagan had to sit on tree roots in the middle of the night on the banks of the river, which caused him great mental fatigue and panic about the future. Intuitively knowing his state of mind, Satharuman tried to encourage him. The Sri Lankan king Mahindan informed him that he was a close friend of the Pandya clan and that if Madhurandhakan went and joined him then there would be no worries. The bell crown of the Pandya clan and the jeweled harem given by Indra are only in Sri Lanka. He knows the existence. There, Mahindan will christen Madhurandhagan. By then, war broke out among the Chola princes and the Chola empire was going to disintegrate. Others will blame the Palyavetarayar Sambhavarayar party for killing Aditha Kari Kalan. Now that Madhurandhakan has come with them, the Velar party will be accused by the Velar party of killing him. Rumors spread among the people that Arulmas Hivarman was also complicit in these massacres. So people will start hating him too. When the Chola kingdom was in chaos, the king of Sri Lanka gathered a large army and invaded the Pandian country. He will capture Madhur Rai. He will conduct a coronation ceremony for the second time for the world to know about Madhuranthagan. He will change the name of Maduranthagan and give him the anointed name of Chola Kulanthakaparuvaluthi. 
he will conduct a coronation ceremony for the second time for the world to know about Madhurinthagan. He will change the name of Madhurinthagan and give him the anointed name of Chola Kulanthakaparivaluthi. He will conduct a coronation ceremony for the second time for the world to know about Madhurinthagan. He will change the name of Madhurinthagan and give him the anointed name of Chola Kulanthakaparivaluthi. Madhurindha's heart was filled with amazement when the sage said all these things. He felt the excitement he had never seen before in his life. The sounds of victory on the battlefields rang in his ears. A variety of musical instruments for consecration ceremonies sounded another beat. The voices of thousands of people long live the Pandya Emperor. Long live the Chola dynasty. They chanted. While Madhurandha was wandering in this blissful fantasy world, he heard the sound of horses' footsteps breaking his dream. The light of the torches was also visible in the distance. The Thasiruman did not expect people to follow them so quickly. So he jumped up with great excitement and said, Prince! Get up! Get on your horse! We must cross the river before they come! In a moment he sprang upon his horse. Seeing that Madhurandhagan was struggling to get on his horse, he said, Sir! Do something! You walk over the bridge and go to a carry. I will bring their horse to a carry too. He said. Beautiful. Do you think I'm a coward? If I can't cross this river on horseback, then how can I cross the sea to Sri Lanka? How can I capture the Pandya kingdom and Mount Singadanam? As he spoke vigorously, he slowly mounted his horse. Both horses went down into the river. Madhurantha's horse suddenly folded its foreleg and lay down at the water bank. Oh! That's what the thinker screamed. Fortunately the horse managed to get up and get into the water. Madhurandhagan's mind was filled with horror. But without showing off, what is this miracle? Are you scared like this? He said. Madhurantha's horse had some kind of injury in its leg and it did not run as fast as other horses in the flood. Often it was flooded with floods. Madhurandhagan took great pains to turn it towards the opposite bank. The hoofs of the horses that came along the shore were getting closer and closer. By half past six, Satarai Raman was standing still for the prince. Then an idea struck him. After giving courage to Madhurandhagan, he rushed towards a carré. He got on the bank and stopped the horse under a tree. He jumped off the horse and returned to the north bank through the bamboo bridge. He had already bought and kept the small knife from Madhurandha. With it he hurriedly cut the ropes hanging from the bridge. It seemed long enough and he tied one end to the bridge and the other under a tree on the other side of the road. Couldn't anyone see a rope tied across the middle of the road like that in the darkness overshadowed by trees? Moreover, those who come fast on horseback will definitely not be seen. When he had done this he thought of running back across the bridge. Changing his mind, he climbed a tree there as Sarasara and sat under the cover of the branches. Madhurandhagar's horse had almost crossed the river and was approaching the bank. If he gets a few minutes more time, Madhurandhagan will get on the shore and go beyond the horse. Before this thought appeared in his mind and disappeared, the horses that came along the road approached the tree. There would be five or six horses two of which came in the lead. Both of them were stopped by the cross rope that had been tied back and forth for a moment and fell headlong. Satariman laughed loudly ha 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 without realizing it as he was on top of the tree. One of those who fell from their horses screamed in terror, Oh! Devil! From the voice he knew that the doctor's son was Pinyagapani. He thought that the fallen man should not have died by strangling his neck, but was still alive. Another feller rose from the ground unfazed. He is our old friend Kanthamaran.